can't hear me yet, but you can hear me now. Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live APAC. Of course, before we start, we'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we live, create, and learn on today. Uh, paying respects to elders past, present, and emerging. And your eyes are not mistaken, it is Bill Hope. Hello, Bill. How are you today? Hello. How are you doing? Very, very well, and excited to be hosted by um, uh, um, a Joanna, who's been um, taking care of the chat for so long. But it's uh, it's amazing to be talking to you face to face um, um, face on to face. Adobe Live. So very exciting. <laughs> bit starstruck, are you? <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. bit. Be uh, a bit well, of a jittery line. <laughs> yeah, as you know, of course, uh, Flynn is out of commission for the moment. Uh, due to expecting and perhaps it's arrived who knows the baby um, but he will be back before you know it but in the meantime you have to deal with me um, yes unfortunately we are also quite small at the top so if you look right at the top of the screen um, you'll see us so we're using a new um, behind the scenes tech setup for today um, which means that we're still a little bit small on the screen, but of course it is the work um, that matters most here and the people making the work, of course. Uh, but as you can see, we've got a festive theme going today, which actually reminds me, Bill, you, uh, you do uh, quite a lot of festive stuff and you did festive stuff, <laughs> stuff, festive illustration last time we were on stream yes if i remember correctly yeah. and this is a very roundabout way of saying that the illustrations that you've done with us previous on stream are now in a book it's done yes <laughs> yes they are um uh yeah no it's uh so i think oh god uh, time is, is uh, so confusing right now but, oh yes uh, it doesn't feel like a whole year ago but um yeah uh, around this time last year we did a stream um where we we're doing some uh um festive uh illustrations and i was talking about a book that i was working on which was a um uh, a festive theme sort of find a find a thing book right? which was called um where's santa's elf and i just so happened to have a copy of said book here in my hot little hand amazing and it's quite exciting because some of the drawings that we did on the stream last year are now in the book so one of the main things that we did was um uh, the uh, a pattern using some of the new functionality in Photoshop for pattern making, and here it is um, in the, uh, the what they call the end pages of the book. So um, it was very very cool to um, do something on stream that turned up um, in in the book in the end, and um, also uh, we did some characters that arrived on one of the pages as well. So I'm just flicking through to the uh, English page, and there are a couple little characters hidden away. You'll have to yeah, it really probably can't see very well down there, but if you <laughs> get your hands on the book, um, yeah. uh, you can see characters that we, we didn't stream. So um, uh, nice that that one's kind of come full circle. Um, I hope that we're not uh, jumping the Christmas gun too much for everyone by getting started on festivities at this point. Um, I have the earlier the merrier. About, yeah, yeah, yeah. I only really sort of start carols and tree and everything on 1st of December usually, but mm. you know, never too soon, never too soon. Never too soon. And yeah. also chat, I've just popped a link, um, the Instagram post for, for this book. So you can, uh, get your, um, mitts on it. Um, just cross over. so to speak, there it um, is. but speaking of chat also, I just want to say hello to RB and to Steve and to Gareth. To Manny, uh, all the way from Philly, and uh, Huggy Wuggy as well. That's a wonderfully, absolutely delightful username. Great um, to have you here, Huggy Wuggy. <laughs> absolutely, our pleasure. Um, and Elizabeth Mock as well. Um, now, of course, if you have any questions for Bill today, they can be festive, they can be uh, not festive, they can be about art, um, color, everything please uh, post those questions in the behance.net slash live chat. Um, that's the chat that I will be monitoring and grabbing questions from and hoping that we can answer as many as possible today. But without further ado, Bill, shall we, shall we start drawing? 
Sure, sure. Um, I thought I'd start today by um, just talking through a Christmassy kind of project that I did a, a couple of years ago because we'll be doing a drawing in a, in a similar kind of style. Mm. So I work as a commercial illustrator, um, so doing all kinds of illustration, um, but um, every year uh, it comes to this time of year and uh, there's always some kind of Christmassy job that comes up. So you end up getting lots and lots of experience drawing elves and Santa um, if you're in the commercial illustration space at all. Um, and this is probably my favorite Christmassy job I've ever had, um, which was designing um, the interior and exterior walls of a Santa's house, which is sort of Santa's hut, um, which was put up in Federation Square in uh, Melbourne. So this is where um, families would come and get their sort of Santa photos for the, from, from the year. And um, I thought I'd just quickly show you this project because we're going to do some drawings in Photoshop in a similar kind of style. So um, I'm just going through this on my website. So at the top here, so you can see this was a, it was sort of in a demountable unit. And then they did a sort of vinyl wrap that went the whole way around um, uh, this, this building. So it had this cute little pitched roof, um, there's big candy canes outside. And I was making these illustrations, yeah, that went the whole way around the outside. Here's me inside getting a photo with uh, with Santa, with uh, all the illustrations behind, um, and uh, some more of the design at the back there. Um, this was one of the internal windows of the the, the house. Um, this is kind of like a, um, a sort of altogether plan of the, the the whole thing. I actually made one out of cardboard. I printed it out and made made myself a little mini version of, course. of the, the the hut, which was cute. Um, and that's just the, the other side there. And that's kind of the style that I was working in. So, I mean, this, this house was six meters long, I think. And I, I quite foolishly, now that I think about it, did it almost in full resolution. I did the whole thing in 150 oh. DPI. Um, so each of the, each of the panels of this are sort of like two, three gigabytes size, oh uh, uh, P, uh, they wouldn't be PDSs, they'd be PSD whatever the large format um, file type Tip. for Photoshop is. Anyway, yeah, they were huge. <laughs> um, so it was a really mega project, but we're gonna do something a little uh, smaller scale today. So I will um, switch over to Photoshop now. So yes, hopefully that's yes. all coming through okay. It sure and, is. Uh, and uh, speaking of Photoshop, just before we kick off, we've got a question already. So please keep those questions coming. Um, but question from Elizabeth, is Photoshop your most used program? Um, do you use it for everything? Uh, it definitely is. Photoshop's kind of my, my, my main work tool. I have started branching out a little bit and doing a tiny bit of Illustrator and um, uh, working on some programs on the, the iPad and I've actually started doing a tiny bit of 3D stuff as well. Cool. But um, for the most part, my my sort of core of my practice is two dimensional illustration and um, drawing with a stylus um, uh, and Photoshop seems to be best suited to that. So Photoshop's definitely my, my main go to tool. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. But please, please do keep the questions coming and I will try and answer them as I'm as I'm sketching away. So I thought um, usually uh, on these streams, we do a lot of uh, sort of really fast paced quick drawing, but this time I thought I'd sort of slow it down and try and show you sort of a bit more of a uh, detailed process of how I put these kind of illustrations together in a sort of festive event. So to save time, I've pre-sketched up this, this illustration of an elf here, trying to pull along a very um, uh, uh, unhelpful Stop reindeer <laughs> and um, they are pulling a gigantic present. And kind of our plan for, I'm doing another stream on Tuesday, same time, I mean, sorry, Thursday, same time. Yes. And uh, on that stream, I was thinking we would make some uh, some more Christmassy patterned wrapping paper design. And then we're gonna wrap this present sitting on the back of the sled um, uh, in that design. So hopefully we could bring those, those two streams together that way. Anyway, without further ado, let's get cracking. So I've sketched up uh, um, this little elf guy. And now I'm going to start doing the inky line work on top. And I'm using one of the uh, Carlsby Webster ink brushes um, for anyone with your Adobe live stream bingo cards out. Uh, Absolutely. That's up there. Um, and yeah, just going to start uh, detailing in um, some of this stuff. Um, Fantastic. Have you got any Christmas crafts or anything going on, Joanna? Christmas crafts. Well, you know, as much as I love to give handmade presents to my family, um, 
They're not always appreciated because they are quite crafty. Um, <laughs> but actually this year, I think we're going to take inspiration from, from Flynn. So in his stream now eons ago, uh, his family, they do that. They all make uh, each other Christmas presents. So instead of, um, I'm not sure if it was Secret Santa or not, but essentially they, you know, chat to the present receiver um kind of mm. figure out what they want and then they have to um, make it by hand so i think it's kind of to to mitigate people just buying something for just just at the budget and it being the most fantastical thing and and perhaps people uh realizing like oh no i should have gotten that instead um so yeah i think i i much to my my family's um potential chagrin. um chagrin exactly oh, excellent word <laughs> i think i'm gonna i have a go again at hand making something but i'm not quite Fantastic. sure what um form that will take yeah um, yeah it's a tricky one i mean I, I i don't know if you've experienced the same thing but um being a sort of uh lifelong drawer and generally mm -hmm creative person everybody in my family has a thousand of my drawings as presents yep <laughs> and I think they know that it doesn't often take me all that long so <laughs> I think I think they're kind of a bit sick of it now they just they just want something they just want something for them um that said uh, I have been doing a bit of uh Christmas crafts on the side um uh, a bunch of our friends have a um uh, a, a, a secret Santa going on. And I won't say mm. what I'm making, but I've been doing a, a bit of uh, wood carving. I'm carving some Christmas presents um, uh, for one of my friends, which has been, um, yeah, really lovely. Um, yeah. Doing a different kind of different kind of discipline. Yeah. No, for sure. We uh, you uh, were very kind to show me uh, show me it at the, before we started streaming. And I say, whoever's gonna receive this gift, it's wonderful. Um, and, uh, I, I think you're going to love it cause I already love it. Cool. It's, it's great. Fantastic. Thank you for your <laughs> vote of confidence. Yeah, you're very welcome. Um, but chat, how about you? Are you doing any, uh, fun, I guess, spins on the traditional gift giving? Are you doing secret Santa? Please, um, let us know. Cool. Cause, uh, yeah. I'd love to love to know and get inspiration for what uh, shenanigans I'll get up to this year um, yeah so I'll, I'll just give you a, a talk through of what I'm doing here so um, I, I am still sort of working relatively quickly um, with the, that series of books that I was showing before they all have um, uh, it's it's uh, largely um, uh, about uh, Christmas elves those books so as a result, over the past couple of years doing two of those books, I've drawn hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of little Christmas elves. So I can mm -hmm. kind of uh, do these kind of characters uh, in my sleep now. Um, uh, but they're, they're, still, they're still lots and lots of fun to draw. I think the thing I like about Christmas illustration is that, um, I don't know, often with creative stuff, you're trying to do something new when you're sort of trying to reinvent the wheel and, and, and do something exciting that people haven't seen before. Um, but with Christmas stuff, you kind of, I mean, you can, you can change it around and do something crazy and different and you, and you want to sort of keep it, keep it interesting, but for the most part, you're kind of working within the genre. So you're mm. kind of working with existing characters and existing colors and existing kind of aesthetics of, of what things would look like. And I actually really enjoy that process sometimes of not having to sort of, um, do all the creative thinking out, out from the outset and just kind of refine what's what's already there. Um, uh, I suppose it's sort of like the same kind of uh, an equivalent of, uh, um, I don't know, the difference between sort of freestyle jazz or getting really good at playing <laughs> a piece of um, classical music or something yeah. where, where you're sort of working within the form. And I find that very, very satisfying. Yeah, I, I think there's, there's certainly uh, a benefit to having either very uh, limited sort of very specific constraints uh, mm. where, you know, okay, I'm going to make something, I can only use these elements um, and that can kind of somehow free up and make you create even more unique stuff because you know, 
I only need to think about or worry about or focus on these three elements, for example. But mm. then you can go in and see, okay, I've only got access to this. What can I do with that? Um, yeah. Or, you know, not then, like it also, you know, taking off the stress of, oh, I have to do all this, this and this. And how can I, you know, do that in a unique way? Uh, whether it is a theme such as Christmas or whether it is uh, woodworking where you only have like a piece of wood and your, <clears throat> um, your knife to work with, that you can only do so much. Um, it really, I think, helps with the with the creative process in either resetting it or, or focusing in and, and honing your skills on something too. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So with this um with this kind of drawing, um, uh, I, I'm, I really love sort of when I've when I've got a a good sketch down, I can just focus on the the, the line work. And so much of what I enjoy about this brush and this style of line work is um, the ability to do sort of big expressive dark mm. lines and then lots of uh, sort of very fine whispery thin lines to fill in the detail. And um, I had a, a drawing teacher once describe line work like this as sort of what he called high frequency and low frequency line work. Oh. And um, that was a way of describing sort of um, the amount of detail you were putting into something. Um, but what that told you sort of about the, um, the, 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 the greater image. So with a, with a composition like this, um, I've actually done a little bit of the, the line work already on some of the, the more boring sections um, to sort of speed things up. And we've got this enormous sort of uh, picture, um, sorry, not picture, um, uh, present uh, over on this side. Um, which is just one giant form, but then lots and lots of little detail in the face. And I guess you would call the, the present on the right sort of low frequency in terms of there's mm. not a lot of line, there's just sort of big blocky shapes and something like the face on the L uh, high frequency. And because you sort of look at all the detail in the face there in comparison to this big large space, your brain kind of reads that amount of detail and then in some ways kind of applies that to the rest of the picture. So by having some small oh. sections of lots of detail, it kind of, um, your brain kind of fleshes out the whole picture. It sort of like uh, gives, gives it a sense of uh, scale or proportionality. And um, that's something I really like exploring with something like this. And the way that you work with uh, line weights as well, sort of the mm. thickness of your line can really help with that. So one thing I'm thinking now zooming out is that I've got lots of very, very big bold lines and this guy's all a little bit too fine. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back in with a, a bigger brush here and I'm just going to really sort of bulk out some of this line work and up close, it looks kind of rough and mm -hmm. a bit a bit too much. So I'm just going to do some of the areas that might be in shadow in a, in a much bulkier line. But once we zoom out, it starts to feel a little bit more a piece um, with the with the yeah. bigger sections of the drawing, yeah, um, and this this brush that I'm using is really good for um, uh, sort of getting those big big lines when you need them, mm. and then really really nice thin wispy lines as well. Yeah, Steve was actually uh, commenting on it that the brush is doing a nice sort of charcoal like effect uh, when you start using it. So my my hunch is that it's the uh, the charcoal vine variant um, brush potentially because that's that's one that I also use quite you know what? often. I've never read the, the the names of the brushes. Oh, really? so I just know what it looks like. But you're probably <laughs> right. I'll, I'll believe you. I'm sure that's the case. It's a super fun brush to use, like almost solely because you know you have such line variation, and on top of that, you also have great texture in in the mm -hmm. brush as well. So whenever I'm drawing something. Um, even at the, the sketch phase, uh, I always try to aim to use a, um, a sort of gritty textured brush because it, it just makes it more fun, more fun yeah, for me. But for it sure. always, you know, depends on the, the style and the brief of what you're doing. But, but I feel like really for you also, a textured brush is, is also synonymous with your practice most of the time. Would you agree? Uh, yes, in, in some ways, but I mean, it's kind of uh, something I've, I've only started using more in the past couple of years. It used to, still a lot of my work, uh, I, I, I prefer like a really 
I just use like the, the most standard Photoshop brush, like a, a, a really tight line work uh, mm -hmm. approach. And I don't know, I find both of them pretty satisfying to do. Uh, it's just a different style. I mean, I like something like this that's kind of loose, but you can still get lots of detail in with those those sort of wispy lines. Mm. Um, and I think when I want to when I want to work quickly, I prefer something like this. And I think the the roughness of the line kind of um, covers up <laughs> mistakes. And, uh, yeah, it kind of is a little bit more forgiving. Working. Yeah, it gives it a nice nice kind of looseness. Yeah, yeah, forgiving is definitely the the word. So I'm just going to put some hay in the mouth of this uh, um, reindeer. I really struggle with anything like horses or reindeer or cows. You Any say sort of that and then this is stock. what we have here, which by <laughs> all accounts is a fantastic rendition of a reindeer. <laughs> Thanks. It, it took me a couple of goes in the, in the sketch stage, but I watched mm. um, Frozen for the first time the other night um so i was i was kind of primed i forget the name of the reindeer in it but there's a very nicely designed reindeer so i was looking at that one and uh um checking that out turns out quite a good movie frozen i don't know yeah don't know have you seen the second one as well um, <laughs> um yeah yeah no i, I saw the um the second one uh like a year ago but for some reason i've never gone back and seen the first one um there you go so a bit of a pro tip here. Um, what I'm doing is I'm doing some of the textured uh, line work for the, the rope. Um, mm -hmm. And it's going to be on this, this angle here. But um, uh, I can hold down shift and draw a nice straight line. But I want to get the texture in. So I'm sort of doing a jittery but straight line while I'm holding shift. Uh -huh. um, and that means I can do that. And I've done that on a separate layer. So now I can do my, my jittery line. And now I can just drop it into place. Genius. I think this this is the the first sort of game changing tip of the stream. I okay. <laughs> wow. Because I mean, I would have just like wrote to the canvas and then done it that way. But but this this I'm going to keep in mind. Save this for later. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's one of the the, the, the good thing the bad things about doing these um these elf books the the, the crowd drawing ones is that. You have to draw lots and lots of things repetitively a million mm. times, which is, is very, um, very labor intensive. But as a result, you start, you get to a point where you're sort of latching onto any possible efficiency that you can gain by doing something a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, so I think it's been a, a really good way of me kind of speeding up my work by doing those books because you kind of, um, I get a little bit obsessed with um, uh, any kind of shortcut or thing that I can do to um uh speed up the process oh for sure one of the things i love about um uh when it comes around to doing christmas time illustrations is that there's a big emphasis on kind of um ornamentation mm. and um uh I, I was given a book many many years ago by my grandmother called the handbook of ornamentation which was this um book which had sort of i guess you'd call them sort of baroque de design um things and it was one of those books I just looked at it uh, for a long, long, long time. And it's kind of informed my whole kind of design aesthetic is this sort of like over the top flowery mm. um, kind of design like this. And you can do it in very kind of, um, you, you start um, sort of uh, learning how to do all this kind of uh, oh, yeah. filigree stuff like this um, that can be very detailed, but it's nice sometimes taking um, sort of very uh, potentially ornate design stuff and um, uh, doing it in a kind of scratchy, loose way with these um, um, uh, festive illustrations. And I don't know, it's something I always like returning to. Yeah, and, and I think also just to go back on uh, brushes again, like the brush that you're using right now was just perfectly beautiful for that kind of uh, filigree as well. So stunning. I just did actually a quick Google. Um, because I want to provide a link in chat if I can, but is it the a Handbook of Ornament by uh, Franz Sales Mayer, potentially? It does sound familiar, but I couldn't I couldn't tell you exactly what the, the, the book is. Actually, That's yeah, all right. Well, for those that want to check out maybe the book <laughs> that maybe Bill was talking book. about, it's, uh, oh, I can see it's in the chat. Chart. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't read it. Um, yeah. I remember uh, um, some quote 
by a, a writer about sort of saying like um, if you if you read a book one book read a hundred times is 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 more worth has more worth than reading a hundred books once um, mm. and I think in some ways the same thing kind of applies to art books like uh, you can look at a thousand Instagram posts but if you have one art book one good art book that you spend lots and lots of time looking looking at that I've, I've always found that much more more valuable when you're actually mm. sort of absorbing the stuff in it okay. well speaking of in that sense um where do you to be inspired or, or for reference where do you usually uh, go is it do you have a a wall of books that is kind of your um your uh, i guess armory of knowledge or or do you go online or whereabouts do you find that yeah um yeah it is definitely related because i mean i i I do spend, I mean, a lot of time, like uh, many people sort of following people on Instagram and seeing what other work people are doing. But um, even though I, I love seeing it in the moment, often, yeah, it's too quick. I sort of see it and scroll on and then I forget about it and it doesn't sort of really stick with me. So um, um, yeah, I think the art books that I have, I mean, I have a, a, a pretty good collection of, of books. It's always been something I've sort of I don't know, I've always told myself sort of that money spent on art books, I'm not going to regret in the long term. And that, mm. that's kind of been the been the case. Sorry, I'm just going to copy and paste that reindeer horn no, as well. That's, they, they see, this is, room. I mean, it's um, working smart. Yeah. Um, uh, and um, yeah, so uh, I, I do have a good collection of, uh, of art books that, uh, that I, I do reference. I mean, not all the time. But when I'm really stuck for an idea, um, there's a book that my my partner got me, um, which is all of Flemish masters, I think. It's sort of all like a, a people called Jürgen van something the Elder or whatever. Um, lots of Bruegel and, and stuff like that. And it's just this book of paintings from a sort of a, a, a medieval masters. And I don't, do any drawings like them but the drawing the, the paintings are so surreal and ornate and interesting that that mm. book it often just sparks an idea for something completely different um and that's one that i go back to all the time um so having just a few things like that i find really really helpful um Fantastic. but that's actually one of the things that i i uh i like most with with drawing is um is uh trying to be influenced by music i'm always listening to music when i'm drawing interesting and, um, um, how do you feel like there's the sort of the audio to the visual how does that carry over for you uh yeah it's often just kind of trying to recreate a, a mood so mm. um uh god i'm gonna have to expose myself by talking about some of my music choices um but uh, uh one recent drawing that i started doing i was listening to a um uh do you remember sierra she was really big in like the uh um, she did that one, two step song with Missy Elliott. Um, maybe anybody, anyway, she was like a big, <laughs> big R and B pop star, uh, and in sort of like the early two thousands. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was listening to some of, some of her music and it was just sort of very high energy and very sort of, um, uh, um, the, the tone of it was very kind of like, um, uh, uh, uh sort of, about, uh, uh, um, doing something different and and it was very mm. exciting so i'm doing i'm doing a drawing that's got nothing to do with her or this the content of the song or anything like that mm -hmm. but i'm just trying to sort of recreate the the feeling of the vibe that i had while while listening to it so so that that's kind of how how it'll go often that's i'm gonna have to try that approach now because that sounds really really fun and and you know you yeah. can see what kind of music and what kind of mood uh sparks different kinds of of subject matter um but speaking of hmm no i don't think i'll be able to make a segue for that but i just wanted to give you a heads up um that we are around the a little over the halfway mark um as well and of course everyone in the chat if you have any questions uh, for bill today about uh christmas present ideas or about illustration um please uh, don't hesitate to ask and um, we will do our best to answer any questions big or small um, in the 
chat today on behands.net slash live. And also, um, Bill, just to let you know, the name of the reindeer, I'm just going to scroll up, I believe, uh, is Sven. Ah, Sven, that would be, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, good to know. Um, cool, so I mean, I've kind of finished with the, the line work now, I suppose it's a good point to transition over to colour. <laughs> and I'll show you a few different things um, with how I approach colour. Unfortunately, I have to start by doing the somewhat laborious and boring task of masking out uh, the area. So I've just got the lasso tool in my hands um, and I'm just making a big selection of all the area that I want to colour mm -hmm. um, uh, beforehand. This is a pretty big part of my process in that, again, it's sort of an efficiency thing. It feels sort of um, a, a bit slow masking everything at the start, but mm. once you've got a good secure mask, it speeds up your process so much because you don't have to worry about painting within the lines. Um, so uh, yeah, if you can just uh, bear with me, I will do my uh, selection. I would usually use the, uh, the magic wand tool for this, but mm -hmm. um, one of the uh, flaws of using a textured brush is that um, uh, it's got all these tiny little gaps uh, yeah. in the line, mm -hmm. so it doesn't quite work um, using the, uh, the lasso tool. Um, that said, you know what, I'm just going to give it a go and see what we, we come up with. So I'm going to fill in our there red reindeer. I'm going to use the magic tool to just sort of see what kind of selection I do get. Oh, let's capture a little bit of that information. So I'm going to invert that selection and um, just paint into where it was. And you can see I've, I've captured a little bit of that, that space, yeah. but I haven't captured the hat or anything. No. That, that sounded so shocked, like, oh, no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, again, like, I, I can imagine that with commercial illustration, you kind of have to, uh, you know, find, find tricks that, yes, maybe it's uh, a couple of minutes more work in the beginning, um, but really if it's going to speed yourself up at the end or sort of throughout the meaty bit of the project, it's it's well worth doing. And I think masking things off like this is certainly um, in that category of, yes, it's a little bit tedious, but once you've done it once, you never have to do it again. Um, yeah, And sure. it just is, is tremendously helpful and uh, speeds things up and, and really contributes to the, the sort of the non-destructive uh, art making as well, which as we know is equally and or just absolutely important uh, when making as well yeah yeah definitely and i feel like i should say like i do go on about efficiency and stuff like that but i mean when i when i started doing commercial illustration a lot of what i was doing was storyboards mm -hmm. um where there's so much emphasis on speed um but there's so many successful illustrators that just didn't fall into the trap of ever saying that they were fast to anyone and <laughs> things just take time and that has worked out great for them as well. Mm. So uh, it's kind of just been the path that I've taken of sort of um, uh, being into working fast, but it's, it's certainly not a requisite for working in commercial illustration. Um, I'm always a bit uh, jealous when I hear of illustrators who just, just say something takes weeks and that's what it takes. <laughs> People are perfectly happy to wait. Um, yeah. I guess then that's the, the great thing with personal work is with personal work you can take all the time you like. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, also, of course, since you do um, sketch noting, um, speed is incredibly useful for, for that as well and, and it makes sense that you might uh, just naturally sort of pour over into the rest of your, your practice as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, well, thank you for enjoying that period of boredom everyone um i think we we pretty much have a, a good mask on that i'm just going to get these final little bits of uh sleigh harness and then we're good to go so one thing i've only just started doing recently which is, is one of those things that it's, it's endlessly the experience of photoshop is finding out incredibly basic things you could have known 10 years ago mm. um is uh using the alpha lock function on um uh layers and all that means is that you're telling the layer um, whatever pixels I've put down keep them in place and don't add or subtract any new ones and if you're in the layers function it, there's a, a little tab at the top that says lock uh -huh. and it's just that checkered box one and you see it's put a little little lock on my layer 
And now if I go to paint into it, I'll choose a green color. Oh, and um, all it does is it just keeps all the information within the oh, layer there. Wow. So I'm painting and it all stays there, which is and how, very... Yep. How different is this to, for example, a, a clipping mask? Is it is it it's, pure it's the exactly convenience the same, that it's all it's, in the same layer? Yeah, yeah, it just, just keeps it in the same layer, but um, clipping masks do very, very similar thing. So I'm going to make a new layer on top. I'm going to hold down the Option key and click in between the layers, and now I've made a clipping mask. And again, same thing. I can paint on top, but it's, it keeps it uh, separate, separate to the layer. OK, mm -hmm. so um, I might stay on the original layer, and I'm just going to start selecting areas um, for color. And instead of painting them, I'm just going to select them and then press Command U to bring up uh, my hue saturation slider. And I'm just going to use that to find the colors that I want. So I'm going to go with a nice green there. Good thing about Christmas is you pretty much have a inbuilt palette. So yeah. I'm just keeping all the greens and reds. Um, and how come you, you were doing the the hue instead of just you know color picking or or having a palette is that to make sure that the the values are, are somewhat um no it just gives same? me a um uh, a little bit more flexibility i can kind of look at what colors i want and change them in real time rather than having to sort of select select ah, each one ah yeah i see yeah that makes yes. sense um so let's go with red there red looking a little pink in the face so let's change that again. I've just used the magic wand to select those pixels, and now I'm kind of just adjusting them until I get a skin tone that I'm happy with. All good. Let's make this guy blonde, maybe. So sorry, I'm using like five different uh, ways to select color um, for this <laughs> one, but I'm just sort of using whichever one feels right in the moment. Um, That's all right. It's it's great, you know, that you have so many at your disposal too. Yeah, you kind of just find ones that, that uh, work for you at, at, at all different times. Mm. Um, so just get and uh, speaking of, you know, you know, tools and finding the ones that work, um, we have a question here from YouTube. And, and just uh, so you know, um, most of the questions, I am keeping an eye on, on YouTube, but most of the questions will be seen and asked through the behance.net slash live. Um, but we've got a fantastic question here. So I'm interested in diving into the world of graphical artist and of being a graphic artist. And my question is what drawing pal palette, no, what drawing tablet do you recommend and why? Um, oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can, I can talk about this for, for uh, uh, thrown in hours. the middle of the stream. Yeah, um, look, I mean, I've been a fan of the, the Wacom tablets for a very, very long time. I'm drawing on one right now. Mm. It's my main tool that I use for my commercial work. Um, so I think if you're in the financial position to buy a big Wacom Cintiq of some kind, um, and you're planning to seriously go into commercial work, then I think it is worth the investment. Um, uh, if uh, you're just starting out in um, any kind of digital drawing, the iPads now are so good. Um, they, they're an amazing, really satisfying and fun drawing tool. Mm. So if you're doing sort of more loose sketching um, and just having fun with it, then I'd say the iPad is the way to go. If you're working in the industry um, and uh, when, are wanting to use full full scale applications like Photoshop, then um, getting a, a Wacom tablet. One really good thing Wacom is doing, and I'm sorry, I promise you, I'm not a paid Wacom rep. No, that's like totally fine. Time. I unfortunately it's just um, being someone at the door real quick. I'm just gonna make sure that my dog is okay. So if you want to take over for a minute, that's yep. totally fine. Um, sorry about this, folks. I'll be right right back. Yeah. So take it away. Um, so, so all I was saying is that uh, yeah, if 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 the the money is is a barrier, um, Wacom have actually started selling what they call refurbished tablets, where basically they're taking a um, a secondhand one and then they're taking it into their um, studio or office or whatever, and they're making sure everything works and then reselling it. And that's a really good way to get a high quality drawing tablet for less money. Um, so yeah, that, that's generally my, my spiel on um, drawing tablets. I hope that is helpful. 
um, in any way. But uh, the, the one proviso I'll, I'll add is that I think um, people earlier on in their career get really stressed about sort of having the right tools and whatever stage you're at, uh, drawing is, is very accessible. You can, you can, you can do 90% of the work you'll ever need to do in drawing on pencil and paper before you transfer to digital tools. They're, they're lots and lots of fun, but um, whatever you've got is, a, is, is enough to start making good work. Fantastic, anyway, and thank you so much for, for stepping in there. We oh, have a uh, very excited dog here in the apartment. Um, oh, and, I, I uh, understand. Was there anything heard. exciting at the door? Any deliveries? Yes, I, I think it might even have been a neighbor and she overheard the the bell from them because um, ah, she's just right. so excited for, for presents in the post. <laughs> yeah. But thank you so much for for taking lead there a bit. And, and I think to, to add on to what you were saying, ultimately the best tool, I suppose, uh, is the one that you have at your disposal. So 100%. Yeah. playing around with um, experimenting and drawing with the, whether it's pen and paper or the, the version of the tablet that you have to, you know, see if, if you enjoy it and uh, if it works for you and um, sort of start that way is yeah is yeah and great. i know incredible artists who are using 10 year old mm. falling apart tablets mm. and i know rubbish artists who are using the fanciest coolest newest thing out so <laughs> um it's 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 really the the time that you put in rather than the tools that you have absolutely yeah. and you know just making sure that you're having fun i think that is yeah. is really important too um not to get too bogged down in oh i have to use these complex things or, or am I using the right tool um, if you enjoy using it then it's the right and the best tool for you because you enjoy using it um, 100% okay so almost done with sort of blocking in the color um, we're almost done to putting a bit more of the, the fun bit for this so one approach that I'm going to use on this one which is something I've been experimenting with um, uh, over with over the years and I'm keen to try a bit more is um, an approach to light and shade um, that uh, a lot of people use and I'll try and explain it roughly um, uh, what it is to you so I've just duplicated my um, my colors layer here um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock that layer and I'm going to make the whole thing uh, completely white which seems sort of counterproductive. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start doing the shade of the drawing in grayscale. So I'm just gonna sort of be painting with just with whites and blacks um, to uh, paint in um, the, the shade. So um, I might bring up, which brush to use? I'm just gonna use a really basic um, uh, brush. I'm gonna mm -hmm. pick a gray. I'm gonna start just doing a little bit of shading um, uh, on this on this black and white layer. And the reason I'm doing this is that I can just, I don't have to worry about the color, I'm just focusing on what, what are the, the big shapes of shade. So um, with this reindeer, I'm gonna start sort of blocking in areas of shade around the stomach and the legs. And the whole purpose of this is for me to just really focus on uh, kind of the, um, the, the, the values or the, the, mm. the, the darks and lights across this picture. And then what I'm going to do at the end is I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to use a filter called multiply, which basically just lets the dark, dark pixels pass through onto the layer below it. So you can see that it's applied that shade onto the layer below. Fantastic. But I'm going to work on it just as a normal layer in mm. black and white. So I just see what, what, what areas of shadow I'm, I'm, I'm painting. And then once I've once I've done all that that shading and um, got uh, all, all that uh, detail in there, I can actually go back and so I'm going to switch that to multiply again. And say I wasn't comfortable with that color of the reindeer there, I can uh, start to adjust it, but all my shadows are going to stay the same. Um, so it's a really uh -huh. flexible way of working where you can sort of have your colors and your shades separate, mm -hmm. so you're not having to sort of um, manage both of them at the same time. Um, yeah, and for something like this where I've got quite a bit of color and detail going on, 
this, um, even though it seems kind of complicated at the start, it actually kind of really simplifies the process for me. Mm. And I can just focus what's uh, important in, in that moment. Um, yeah, great. I did, I'd like, it's reminding me a lot of just uh, using gradient maps and, and essentially that's that's what you're doing. But I, the trick of duplicating and, and using it in the way that you're using it, which is not a, a method that I've been familiar with, is is really interesting. I'm gonna have to try this out um, cool, cool. as well. Yeah, I, it works really well with things that have lots of different colors or, or something that's quite complex because you're kind of just like breaking the bigger project into kind of like manageable bite-sized pieces. Mm. Um, and if you kind of do a okay job at the shading and an okay job at the colors, once you combine them together, it starts looking quite good um, and also you've got the benefit of being able to easily shade over um, uh, I mean I haven't applied them yet but the belt and the um, yeah. hammer and things here I'm going to make them all different colors but I can apply the same level of shade to them um, as I as I work through this process so yeah I'm just kind of thinking about initially where the light source of this would be so it's probably going to be sort of just sort of towards the top left of the, the um, top left of the, the canvas here mm -hmm. and I'm just thinking about if the light's coming from this direction hitting this part of the leg which areas of it would be in shade and then just blocking those in that is great Manny is just saying in the chat you just blew my mind exclamation <laughs> mark exclamation mark of uh, I think um ditto <laughs> as they say yeah that this is you know again a, a slight I guess detour to what you would suspect the the sort of the drawing process is and then it just creates massive benefits down the line of being able to have much more control and um and uh like understanding of how the light and the shadow and all that all that works that is great yeah yeah i mean there's lots of really interesting processes watching another illustrator that does this process but does it in two different layers and um, it was really, I'm trying to remember what he called it, but he basically, so if I do the same process again of make, make the layer above, make it white, and he would mm -hmm. do sort of one version where it was big block shadows like this. Mm -hmm. And then um, one layer, which he called, I think occlusion shadows, um, which I think is a sort of 3D person oh. kind of um, term. And basically he just means the shadows that come from sort of folds or edges of things. So he would do, okay, I'm just working on the folds and edges of things and um, I'm going to do all the occlusion shadows. Um, and he would do all of that as one layer and then apply that on top of the pre-existing sort of more detailed uh, shadow layer and that would build up a much more complex version of the shadows that mm. he was using. Um, and I found that really interesting. You can kind of just add more and more complexity as you, as you go along. Um, I might just quickly um, add some of the colors that I forgot about earlier. Um, oops. Great, because, yeah, and, and with the method of having, like, the occlusion, it's kind of you have your your sort of hard edge shadows, which is the, the first layer, um, and then on top of that you could also combine it with more um, sort of soft brush, dis diffused light shadows to really give it um, yeah. a lot more shape. Yeah, I'm kind of keen to sort of explore a bit more of um, 3D, um, uh, 3D stuff, just because mm -hmm. um, I think the way that those programs work, you have to think about light in a really detailed way. Mm. And I think um, even though I'm, I'm, I have no plans of becoming a 3D artist, um, I'm sure there's lots to be learned there about sort of just how light works and um, um, how to how to bring it into two-dimensional illustrations as well. <laughs> oh, sorry, I got completely um, sidetracked by uh, Gareth's amazing comment here in the chat um, where, you know, dragging along the reindeer, uh, you're at work, it's a busy day, but um, Gareth's question is, but is he complying with elf and safety? <laughs> 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 oh, that is fantastic. I think that's, job, that's a pun that Flynn would approve of for sure. Uh, <laughs> that is top, top-notch stuff. 
So yeah. thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> That's great. The, um, the, the picture book that we were talking about at the start of the stream is about um, uh, some, um, actually, there's a bit of a spoiler. So if anyone is dedicated to the plot lines of uh, In that um, case, picture books. I might, I might interrupt you just to say that. Unfortunately, time has gone by wickedly fast. Oh my gosh, it um, has. And we have five minutes left, so if anyone has any last minute questions, uh, feel free to, to pop those in the chat. Um, it's been too long, we just want to hang out, that's the yeah. thing. <laughs> um, but as we were mentioning at the start of this, so this session was all about um, doing the line work and, and starting the, the colouring and the shading process. And actually what we're going to do uh, in the next stream on Thursday is create a little bit of a pattern for this massive massive christmas present that's here in the sleigh so for next session uh, please come along ready with um, ideas and suggestions of what that pattern might look like so objects um, colors or effects um, everything that you you think could and should be included in um, a pattern on this big 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 ginormous present um we'll be ready to hear them and i also would love to to hear what you think about what is in this this big present. oh i hadn't even thought of that it's mm. a very good point um the plot thickens um uh yes um yeah no, definitely hoping that can be a bit more of a collaborative drawing session this one's been a bit of a a, a monologue but um um definitely please Please come on Thursday with um, any suggestions for things you'd like to add. And we were kind of hoping um, once we'd finished uh, the, the pattern, um, we can post it uh, on the Discord. So um, if anybody would like to use the Christmas wrapping pattern that we're going to make for wrapping your own presents on Christmas, you can do so. So um, uh, yeah, um, keen to see if anybody goes ahead with that. Absolutely. And I will uh quickly post a, a link to our discord as well um if anyone wants to check it out um please please feel free to join us we have lots of uh fun there i'm just grabbing the link da, 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 da. <laughs> let's see scrolling down Wonderful. And uh, if anybody saw it last time, uh, we used um, a function within the 2020 release of Photoshop, um, which is called Pattern Preview, which is lots and lots of fun. Um, and um, it makes it really easy to make repeating patterns uh, for something like textiles or wrapping paper. Um, so yeah, little Absolutely. few interesting tips there. Well, I appreciate that you've made this uh, full screen and you've done, I mean, you always do an incredible job. I'm always massively impressed uh, and tis the season to be illustrative, I, I would say. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bill, for, for joining us today. And I'm so, so excited for, for part two later in this week. Everyone, please check out the book um, that Bill has illustrated and find all the find all the things all over the world. Um, and if you want the link to that, it is just up in the at the top of the chat. Bill, thank you so much. Have an early happy holidays, and we'll see you on Thursday. Fantastic! Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Catch you later.